Let me recap one of the major arcs of this course. Many weeks ago, I started talking about population growth. I argued that percentage growth, when interpreted mathematically, is a differential equation. It is a statement that relates the change of a function to the current value of the function. Therefore, I needed tools to solve differential equation. Well, then I built those tools, limits, derivatives, and now integrals. Finally, I can return to the main idea and solve differential equations. In general, this is pretty difficult. I will only scratch the surface in this course. But even doing that, I can still show some substantial techniques that apply to many equations. What I'm going to do in the next two videos is just a start, but it is far from nothing. So, let me start with the easiest version of a differential equation. Consider this equation. The left is the derivative of some function f of x. The right is some other function g in the same independent variable. This is an equation that very explicitly tells me what the derivative of f is. It is this other function g. To solve this de, I just integrate both sides, since the integral gets rid of the derivative. So I integrate both sides. On the left, the integral of the derivative is the original function. On the right, I have the integral of g, which will eventually involve the addition of a constant of integration. Two things to say here. First, solving DEs is almost always some kind of integration process. To get rid of the derivative, some integral will be involved. This process here is solved by direct integration. I just integrate both sides. The other techniques for DEs are much more involved, but they all still involve some kind of integral. Second, there is a constant of integration, which means the solution of the DE has something unknown in it. This is typical. To fully solve a DE, I need more information. In terms of something like population growth, this more information is the starting population. The differential equation, equation tells me how things change, but not where the function started. Some initial condition is required. This is just some value of the function, f of a equals b, for some numbers a and b. This initial condition will be enough to figure out the constant of integration c. And if I have a de and an initial condition, together they are called an initial value problem and an initial value problem should have a unique solution. So, let me show you an example of an initial value problem, or IVP for short. Here is a differential equation of the type I showed. df dx is some function of x. Then there is an initial condition, in this case f of 0 is 7. To solve this, I integrate both sides. The integral on the left cancels the derivative, leaving just f. On the right, this is a reverse power rule. The antiderivative is x to the 4 over 4 plus a constant. Then the integration step is finished. So now I need to figure out c. To do this, I put the initial values in. f of 0 equals 7 says that when x is 0, f is 7. So I put x equals 0 and f equals 7 into the equation. The result is an equation where only c is unknown, this is pretty easy, the zero goes away, and I just get c equals 7. So the unique function f, which satisfies the de and the initial condition, is f of x equals x to the 4 over 4 plus 7. The IVP has been solved, and there are no unknown constants left. Here is another IVP with a de solvable by direct integration and an initial value. I do the integration first. I integrate both sides, leaving f on the left and negative 2 cos 3t plus c on the right. Then I need to use an initial condition to determine c. When x is pi over 6, f is 6. So I replace f with 6 and x with pi over 6. The result is 6 on the left and negative 2 cos pi over 2 plus c on the right. Cos pi over 2 is 0, so that term goes away and I conclude that c equals 6. Therefore, the unique solution that solves this IVP is f of t equals negative 2 cos 3t plus 6. Here is one last example. This is a differential equation which can be directly integrated, again because the right is just a function of x. It has initial value f of 1 equals pi. I integrate both sides. 
On the left, I get the function f. On the right, this is an integral from the tables, which tell me that this antiderivative is arctangent x plus c. Then I use the initial conditions. When x equals 1, f equals pi. So I put x equals 1 and f equals pi into the equation. On the left, I get pi. And on the right, arctangent of 1. Well, the arctangent of 1 is pi over 4. So I subtract pi over 4 from both sides. And I conclude that c must be 3 pi over 4. This means that the unique solution to this IVP is f of x equals arctangent of x plus 3 pi over 4.